What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Beth and I make all things motherhood and lifestyle content on YouTube. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my tips and tricks and hacks for when it comes to traveling internationally with a baby or a young toddler. At the time of filming this video, I have a one-year-old, so I'm brand new into the toddler world. And I have been traveling with my baby since she was four months old. So I think at the time of filming, this she's now been on six flights but I know that that does not make me an expert however I have kind of picked up a little bit of just tips and tricks along the way of ways that have really helped us to survive flying with her traveling with her in general being in an airport and so I hope that this video can help you guys out if you have a trip planned for your little ones soon too one thing that I will say is that this video is going to be more catered towards babies that are a little bit older so anywhere from like the six to twelve month range but then also kind of like 12 to 18 months because I feel like a lot of the needs during that time frame although the babies are very different are similar because those babies are typically on solids now they typically have more of a consistent sleep schedule when it comes to naps and they typically have different routines and things like that that they would be following on a daily basis at home so when you travel with a child that is anywhere from like 6 to 18 months it really does throw off their schedule it can be really tricky and I know for myself that I've often had anxiety going into those circumstances so I hope that this can just give you some peace of mind as you plan for your trips so you can actually get excited you are going to be traveling with a baby that's anywhere from like zero to four or five months I would actually recommend that instead of this video that you go and check out my traveling with a four month old video which I will link here because I think that that will just be a little bit more contextualized to the age of the baby that you are traveling with but with all that being said let's dive on into the tips so I'm going to make this as rapid fire as possible and I'm going to start with kind of like the planning before you actually get to the airport before you get to the plane so my very first tip is to make sure that your diaper bag is packed really really well I'm actually going to insert a clip here of what our diaper bag looked like before our last flight that we went on which was a nine hour flight to go to Europe for two weeks so check out this clip and then I will give you guys a couple of notes on that so we're just about to leave for the airport but I wanted to show you guys what I've packed in my kind of carry-on diaper bag for Vivian this stuff is going to go on top at the very end so that's a change of clothes and some wipes but this is the maiden carry all tote it is so great for travel because as you can see there are so many compartments here i actually do also have a discount code for this so i'll link it in my description box but in the front here we just have some soother clips i've got some pre-prepped bottles on the sides here and then inside the bag i have just enough diapers for us to actually do the trip this is a pre-packaged canister of formula it's kind of jam-packed in here so i don't know if i'm be able to take it out for you guys we have lots of baby snacks in this pouch here as well as this pouch so this is a muffin that i made that is pre-cut up as well as some applesauce and then on this side we have some puffs and this is like a little bento box of snacks that i have prepped so a lot of this bag is just snacks to keep her happy in this back corner i have a little bit of diaper cream and then in here it's just a little bit more of like plain essentials so i have some lysol wipes to actually wipe down our seat area this little tiny book from Love Every that I use for diaper changes to keep her entertained. Um, some baby Tylenol and hand cream. And then in and behind here, I've prepped a bag of plain toys. So as you can see, it really does come down to preparation when it comes to the diaper bag. That is like the number one resource that you have with you on the plane. Obviously, if you have other carry-ons, you can add a few things into those, but then you're putting them up above. And I think that it's just so important to have a really well-stocked diaper bag. It reminds me of that quote, fail to plan, plan to fail. <laughs> That is what happens with your diaper bag if you don't have the right amount of snacks in there, of diapers, of wipes, of toys for your baby, depending on how old they are and what they're doing. So make sure that you really prioritize packing your diaper bag well. That leads right into my next point, which is to only pack enough diapers and wipes for you to actually get to your destination. So depending on whether you are doing a domestic flight and it's only gonna be a couple hours or you are going on a nine hour flight internationally like we did for our most recent flight, having the right amount of diapers is really important so I would try and work backwards and think through how many diapers you typically see wet or dirty during a certain time frame in the day with your baby and then make sure you have at least that but also a couple extra this is where having a few more and maybe you or your partner's carry-on can be really helpful but outside of that when it comes to actually putting diapers and wipes into our checked baggage we typically avoid doing that and the reason for that is because diapers and wipes take up a ton of 
space and baggage. When you're traveling with a baby, you have so much as is. So what we will typically do is pack enough in the bags for our travel portion, maybe a couple in our check baggage for as soon as we arrive, just to tide us over. But then after that, we'll do a stop at a grocery store, a convenience store, whatever that looks like pretty immediately when we get there to stock up on things that we do not have. So diapers, wipes, any other snacks that we may need, just to make sure that we're freeing up that space. So my next tip applies mostly to formula feeding mamas. If you are a breastfeeding mama, you can fast forward to the next tip, but that is to pack formula ahead of time and make sure that you know what the formula kind of world looks like in the destination that you are going to. So for us, we were weaning our daughter off of formula at the time that we traveled to Europe, but it ended up being a good time for that because the formula in Europe is, at least in Sweden, very different from the formula that we have in Canada. We don't carry the same brands, we don't carry the same ingredients in our formula, and so having the formula that she was used to was really important to me before we left. That being said, packing formula can be tricky because it's really bulky, the containers are kind of heavy, and so what I did is I bought canisters from the dollar store and actually pre-measured out the amount of formula that I knew I needed for travel, and I put a canister of that into my diaper bag, and I put a larger canister of that into our checked luggage so that we would have it when we got there and arrived. I think the thing that did really help us is the fact that the containers that I got for the formula were really, really thin, and I was able to fill the formula all the way up to the top. I find that formula tins are often like a lot of dead space from a certain point up to the actual lid, so you can't really jam it as tightly as you would if you got a thinner one from the dollar store. So I pre-measured out those scoops, put those into the suitcase, and we were good to go from a formula perspective. So my next tip is also for babies who are bottle fed. That also could be breast milk, but the thing that worked really well for me was keeping three prepared bottles on me at all times. What I mean by that is having a couple of bottles that had formula already pre-scooped and measured into them while they were obviously dry, they didn't contain any liquid, which is important for security because sometimes they will require you to empty it. However, I also did keep one that was fully prepared so it had boiled water in it as well as the scoops of formula prepared in it in case there was ever a situation we ran into where we needed that. And they did actually allow me to bring that through security, which was great. On the actual flight, if you have pre-prepared bottles that have formula with them, the flight attendants can help you make those bottles. So typically what I would do is I would go back to where the flight attendants were and I would ask them to fill up my bottles with a little bit of boiling water and then I used cold bottled water to dilute the boiling water to get it to a better kind of warm temperature for our daughter and then that way we always had bottles ready to go on the plane whether that was just because it was a regular feeding time or we wanted to have that option for her during landing. So I would definitely recommend, especially if you formula feed, having pre-prepared bottles with you on your flight. This next Next tip may be the most important tip that I share in this video outside of having a really well packed diaper bag and that is to have snacks on snacks on snacks on snacks with you at all times in the airport on the plane and at your destination. Depending on age, this is obviously going to look different. If you have a six month old, it might just be puffs or mum mums, rice crackers, things like that. But if your baby is like over one and closer to like 12 to 18 months, you're going to want to really have a lot of snacks with you because now that your baby is relying on actual food more than milk to supplement their diet, having snacks with you and actual good options is going to make the experience so much better overall. And so before we took off, the day before, I actually pre-prepared in like a little container snacks for her that had like fresh strawberries in there, cucumbers, pita bread. When it comes to the kind of snacks that you're gonna wanna pack, obviously for babies you want really high iron, vitamin C, some fat sources if you can, but if it's not the most nutritionally dense food that your baby gets in their entire life, that's okay. A lot of the times it's only one day out of the big picture of their entire diet. So I would also say to really prioritize mess-free snacks. So that's why things like puffs are really great or little like crackers and different things that they can eat. And then another hack is to buy fresh fruit at the convenience store, like in the airport if you can, once you've gotten past security but you're waiting to board. Because a lot of the time that's a really great snack for your baby before you board, but you can also bring it on the plane if you want to. So things like bananas and apples, we would just bite off pieces of those and give them to her while we were traveling to make sure that she was still getting food in her, but that it was also semi-nutritional 
nutritious and reasonable to be feeding her as well. Another cool hack that I saw from a mom on Instagram is to use those like pop it fidget toys to kind of like slow down how quickly they can eat their snack. Our daughter will literally take fistfuls and so we put them in the different like individual pockets of the pop it and that just helped to kind of slow her down but also made it a fun activity on the plane when things were getting a little bit squirrely. All right, now that we're out of feeding tips, I'm gonna go into a few quick airport tips for you guys. And my first airport tip is to bring a change of clothes for your baby. The reason that I say to do this is because oftentimes you wanna put your baby into a really comfy outfit going into the airport, but then airports are just really dirty and they're going to want to be crawling all over things. They might be trying to walk around and falling down. And also the fact that we had like fed her a couple of times in the airport and so there was food all over her pajamas I was just so glad that we had a change of clothes because right before we boarded it gave me the opportunity to bring her to the bathroom to get her cleaned up a new diaper a new outfit and then that way she was just a lot more comfortable getting onto the plane my next tip is super practical and it's to consider getting a folder for all of the like family files that you will be bringing to the airport so your passports for each of your family members the boarding passes we just found that adding one extra person to our family even though it was just one more made the handling of all of like the passports and boarding passes feel a lot more chaotic than it had felt when it was just my husband and I and so I had actually planned ahead and got a clear folder pouch for this last trip that we could reach into and know that all of our boarding passes and passports would be well organized in and the other things that we did bring and this is a bonus hack for you guys just in case but is depending on how young your baby is and how recently you got their passport to bring a a birth certificate for your child and also a marriage license proving that you are husband and wife. One of the tricky things with Canadian passports is you don't sign them in Canada for infants or really young children and so they actually told us at the passport office that bringing the birth certificate was important. I wasn't taking any risks in a foreign country and so I had the marriage certificate, I had the birth certificate and all of that was in one kind of clear folder pouch in Jared's backpack that we could reference really easily while we were getting through the airports. My next tip is to use baby wearing through boarding and security. During this time, there's typically a lot of like shuffling that's happening. You're moving through lines. You wanna do things really quickly because there are agents that are directing you really quickly. And so having your baby in the stroller at this point can be tricky because you're having to stop to actually unstrap them and take them out, pick them up. I found that just having Vivian on made it so much easier to actually get through these processes. One thing that I'll note is that if you go through security and you have a kind of like baby wearing type thing that has metal on it, it will go off. But in our case, I've never had any issues with that. They've always just kind of seen that there was metal on it and been okay with it. So in my experience, baby wearing through those really critical parts where you want to be like all hands on deck and paying attention makes it so much easier. My next tip for when you are in the airport is to bring a stroller cover for naps. Depending on how long you're going to be in the airport, you probably will have a nap time come up, especially because I find that most babies, depending on how old they are, have kind of like a three to four hour range before their next nap comes up. And so for us, having a stroller cover was really helpful because it just gave her a little bit of an opportunity for quiet time, even if it was like 15 and 20 minutes that she slept, I would still rather have that than absolutely no naps at all. So the stroller cover that we use is called a Quilby. It is typically designed for car seats, but I have used it over the actual like child seat attachment on our Appa Baby Vista as well. And the reason that I really like the Quilby is because it is light blocking and also sound blocking. Obviously there will be some sound and light that comes through, but anything that can help diffuse that a little bit for baby is going to make it more likely for them to actually be able to take naps. So that is what we brought through the airport and I just pushed her around in her stroller with the Quilby cover over for a little while to just give her a little bit of quiet time before we boarded and try and get in at least a few minutes of a nap during the time that she typically would have had one. All right, so the next section of tips that I'm gonna go through is when you're actually boarding and on the plane. So my first tip for you guys is to bring your stroller to the gate. Oftentimes, and I've made this mistake before, people will go to the website of an airline and they'll actually pay for a baby item when they're booking their flights, but most airlines will actually allow you to push your stroller 
right up to the gate, which is obviously super nice because then you have it in the airport with you for all of that transportation. But then when they take it up to the gate, they'll just put it under the plane. And then as soon as you get off, the stroller is there waiting for you when you arrive, which is a game changer. However, what I will say is that not all airlines allow for this. Our first time experiencing this was in Europe when we got to Denmark and we tried to check our stroller at the gate. And they told us that the airline wasn't allowed to do that. They were only allowed to do it with like the yo-yo type strollers that are a lot smaller than the one that we were traveling with. And so we ended up having to check the stroller as special baggage and honestly it's the worst when you have to do that because it makes everything a little bit less convenient but you can get strollers from the airports in a lot of places like I don't know if you can do it in Canada I haven't seen it there but I know for a fact that you can do it in Europe because we did that at the airport in Copenhagen as well as the Stockholm airports having some sort of stroller in the airport is obviously really really helpful when you're pushing around your bags and your baby and just having that one less thing to worry about is really nice but if you can make sure that you do check your stroller at the gate maybe just check with your airline beforehand to make sure that they accept it if they don't because then that way you can plan to look for a free stroller to just borrow while you're in the airport instead my next tip is to bring Lysol wipes for the plane itself and any play areas so once we get on to any flights that we take one of the first things that I will do is take out my little bag of Lysol wipes and kind of just disinfect the area around us I don't trust how well planes are cleaned in before flights. I know that airports and planes are just so hectic right now. There's a lot going around. And so I don't take any risks. I always just wipe down the like tray in front of us and any plastic or exposed areas that I think that my baby might be interacting with. That way there's just a little bit more peace of mind because it is inevitable that those fingers are going to end up in their mouth again. And just to avoid anything being picked up, I just find that having disinfectant wipes is a really important thing to do. Next, I would recommend that you invest in a small, and it doesn't need to be anything expensive, but just a special bag of plane toys that your baby has never seen before. Whenever we board a plane, my first go-to is always for Vivian to exhaust her interest in everything immediately around us. So like the instruction manual for how to land, the paper puke bags in front of us, the little like window that goes up and down. I try and have her engage with everything around us first, but inevitably that always gets old to them very quickly and they want something new. And so having a little special bag of plane toys that your baby has never seen, I find that you can like take one out, introduce it to them, see how they react to it. It may buy you like 10, 5, 15, 20 minutes. I don't know, depending on like how good that toy is, you know your child best. And then once they get bored of that one, I'll take a new toy out and then introduce that as well. So what I have done is I just go to the dollar store and I get a Ziploc bag, a clear one, and I fill it up with things that she hasn't seen. So on this last plane ride, I did like a slinky. I got some colored popsicle sticks and just like really basic cheap things that I knew that she would be interested in. And that actually did buy us a lot of time on the plane ride there as well as on the plane ride back. So I think that having a special bag of plane toys is just one of those things that always makes sense to do, especially if you're going to be on a longer flight. My next tip flows very nicely out of having a special bag of plane toys for your child. And it is to give yourself the permission to just throw away for a day or two any like rules or expectations or pressure that you put on yourself to avoid screen time for your children because when you are traveling it's inevitable that at some point you're probably going to show your child a screen whether it's the screen on front of them or having something downloaded to your device honestly if it's going to keep your kid happy for a few minutes i promise you that it's not going to damage them for the rest of their life if they have a little bit of exposure to screen time for a bit so what we really like to do is to just screen record or download a couple of things off of YouTube that we know are at least educational to show our daughter on the plane. So our go-to is oftentimes Miss Rachel for this. We'll download just a couple of minutes or screen record it just so that it's on our phone ready to go. Another option is to download some content from Netflix to your iPad or your iPhone if you can do that. The reason that I think it's good to have things downloaded to your devices is because if you just rely on using the screen in front of you you have to have adult headphones to have audio come out of that screen and like we weren't going to use the adult headphones 
headphones on our daughter. We don't have baby size headphones that actually work for music or audio or anything like that yet. So we just turn the volume really, really low on our phone so that she can still hear it a little bit and then show her that for a couple of minutes just to kind of bridge the gap between some of the moments where she gets really squirrely while we're flying. My next tip for the airplane is if you have a soother to bring it, it's really helpful for takeoff and landing, especially when it comes to their ears and the pressure but it's to make sure that you have extra soother clips with you. It is so gross when a soother falls to the floor of an airplane and like it can often fall underneath the seat or by the feet of the people that are in front of you or behind you and it's just nasty. So make sure you have a ton of soother clips available and back up soothers just in case. This next tip is something that I made it like literally four flights in before I realized was a game changer and that is to have some sort of blanket or swaddle or something that you can use to cover your baby's eyes on the plane if you want them to sleep. So our daughter is typically used to sleeping in a room that is pretty dark. That's just the optimal sleeping environment for a baby. And so on the airplane, when we did an overnight flight, as much as it was darker on the plane as it is during the daytime flights, it was still pretty bright because people around us were watching screens. There was lights coming down overhead. When they came to bring food out, it got really bright again. And so I ended up having to use like a blanket from the airplane to kind of help cover her eyes. And I just know and have heard stories about how gross those things actually are. I don't know, maybe if you're a flight attendant, you know better than I do whether or not they actually get washed in between flights, but I have heard that they literally just like take them and repackage them and then use them for the next flight, which is so nasty. But it was the only thing that was like dark enough and available to us to help cover her eyes properly during her nap. And once we were able to kind of just like shield her a little bit more with it, we ended up sleeping for five hours on that overnight flight. So if you can plan ahead to not have to use an airplane blanket and just have something available either in your carry-on or diaper bag, it may help a lot with nighttime sleep on a plane. Okay, so this next tip is my last one when it comes to like being on the plane itself. And I may catch some heat for this, but I'm gonna share it because it really helped us. And it's that if you know your baby and you know that they often get irritated with like landing or takeoff in particular, and it really is painful for them to bring Tylenol with you, baby Tylenol of course, on the airplane. Typically having like a soother or a bottle or breastfeeding will work for most babies, but in our case, I found that because we had a connecting flight and so we were up in the air super high up at major altitudes because we're traveling across the world and then we had to go all the way back down and then all the way back up again, on that like second landing, Vivian was in a lot of pain. And I just had the thought before we left of like, maybe I'll pack Tylenol just in case. And so I ended up giving that to her and it really helped a lot with her just dealing with the pain of that and not like struggling and being so uncomfortable. And so I don't have any regrets in doing that. I think it's just a really good thing to have with you just in case, because obviously you don't know how your baby will react to it. So plan to be able to do like breastfeeding or a bottle or a soother as like plan A, but I don't have anything against plan B being baby Tylenol, so just decide what you want to do with that information. So my final tip is not airport or airplane related, it's just travel and especially international travel related, and that is investing in a slumber pod for your destination. I know that the slumber pod is expensive, but if you are someone that travels a lot or you're going on a trip that's really important to you and you're bringing your baby and you want that trip to go well, I would just say that like really consider purchasing it because it will give you a way better trip to know that your baby is going to sleep well at night than if you end up going and your baby is up throughout the night and then you're exhausted all day and you're frustrated because this trip isn't going like the way that you expected it to. And I just feel like all in all, it really is like the best investment that you can make if you are a frequent traveler. I personally feel like having a slumber pod is like investing in a hotel room specifically for your baby because it's so dark in that thing. It just goes right over any pack and player crib and then you can have the lights on in the room that you're staying in. So if you're room sharing, there's way less of an impact on like your ability to actually enjoy that time. And if you're going to be spending like thousands of dollars on a trip, it's kind of worth it to just spend another extra couple hundred bucks to make sure that you actually are seeing your baby sleep at night because again, it just makes the rest of the trip so much better.
This video is not sponsored, but I do have a Slumber Pod affiliate link and a discount code. So I will put that in the description box. If any of you want to check it out and you know that you are going to be traveling frequently or just want to make sure that you can really enjoy your vacation with your baby. Try and just like relax, take the pressure off. Traveling is fun. Traveling with babies is fun. It's so cool to be able to show your kid the world and new places. And so try and focus on that element of it and do your best to remove the anxiety from some of it, even though I know it can be tough. I do hope these tips really help you guys and can set you up for success with wherever you are going. If you are traveling with your child somewhere soon, let me know in the comment section where you're going. I think it's so cool to hear all the different trips that people have planned now that like airports are back open and we can do a little bit more of that. So I would love to hear about that. But if you guys liked this video, I would love if you could give it a thumbs up, share it with any mamas that you know are traveling soon and that could really benefit from this information. But until my next video, I love you guys, I'm praying for you guys, and I will see you soon.